Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. This week's video I will be mostly looking like this because the UK is having a heat wave and it currently feels hotter than the surface of the sun. Anyway, I'm gonna make this cabinet over. It's a brand new colour from Dixie Bell Paint and I also lost my brown wax. So stay tuned to find out how I got round that. Okay, we're gonna start midway through the prep and that's because I've already covered prep for pine in other videos so I don't want to go over it too much but if you look back on my channel you will find some other videos on how to prep pine but basically I stripped the wax, I then cleaned it with Dixie Bell's White Lightning, I then treated the knots with knotting solution and now I'm going in with Dixie Bell's Boss Primer which is a stain blocking primer, it's a water based primer, it's in the colour grey and I gave this two coats all over and let it dry completely. Ideally you want to let that primer dry for 24 hours before you apply your paint and I knew I was going to use this colour from the get-go. It's one of Dixie Bell's brand new colours called Weeping Willow. It's from their chalk mineral paint range and it is the perfect sage green. If you've watched my content before you'll know that I have a little bit of an obsession with green colours um, so obviously I was I was naturally drawn to this colour to try it out this is the second colour that I've used from their new collection which is a cottage collection so I'm kind of going to lean into that look a little bit so this is going to be a sort of cottagey farmhousey kind of vibe So if you've noticed, I'm not painting the paint on with traditional paint brush strokes, brush strokes, paint brush strokes, you know what I mean. I'm stippling this on. I wanna create a little bit of texture because I want this to kind of look a little bit aged. I'm gonna do a little bit of distressing and I did plan on doing a stencil, which I then took off, but I'll show you that in a later stage. So the reason for the light bit of texture is just to give the paint a little bit of movement and stop it looking so flat. And like I say, I'm gonna do some dark wax detail, which is gonna kind of just be a little bit more emphasized if the texture is there. You can see how good the coverage was after one coat, but I always do two coats of any chalk mineral paint color, even if it covers really well on the first. So I let that dry, and then I thought I wanted to do a stencil on the front. So I used the color Cucumber Ice. Again, it's a brand new color, and I stenciled the Harlequin stencil on the front of the drawers and the cupboard door as well, the panels on there. And then I distressed it a little bit, and then I felt like it wasn't quite right, so I added a frame around, sort of like, I painted the trim around the edge in the same colour in Cucumber Ice, and I distressed that a little bit, I wet distressed it to bring some of the green through, um, and I also sanded it a little bit as well, just to give it a little bit more of a distressed look, but I just didn't think it was right. There was just something about it not quite right for this particular piece. So I got my electric sander out and sanded the stencil smooth so that you couldn't see the outline and then went over the top of that with two coats of Weeping Willow just to make sure that I covered the stencil completely. The reason I sanded it down before painting over it is because you can still see a faint outline from where you've applied your stencil if you don't sand it flat. So if you do ever do a stencil and then you wanna remove it or paint over the top of it, just bear in mind that if you don't sand it flat, you will possibly still see that little tiny bit of an outline when the light shines on it. So I'm back to a plain green dresser. And to be honest, I think I just needed to keep this simple. The stencil was too much um, and it just wasn't right for this piece. So I decided to just keep it simple and emphasize some of the details with Best Dang Wax in Brown. But I actually misplaced it. I only have one tin. I couldn't find it anywhere and I was getting really angry. So there is a, a kind of a get, get around, if you like. You can actually tint the clear wax with any chalk mineral paint colour. So that is exactly what I did. I made my own brown wax. So I'm using a paper plate and I put some clear wax on the paper plate with a little wooden spatula, spoon, tongue depressor, lolly stick, whatever you want to call it. And then I use two chalk mineral paint colours, a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of coffee bean just to give me the right kind of brown that I was looking for. 
This wasn't to match Batang wax in brown identically. I just wanted a brown wax for shading. I could have used black wax, but I just didn't want that much contrast with this piece. Brown is a lot softer than black, obviously, and I just wanted to add some subtle shading. So that is basically how you can make your own tinted wax. You can actually do it with any colour you like. You don't have to stick with a boring brown colour. You could make yellow wax, blue wax, green wax. You can make any colour you like, as long as you don't put too much paint in the wax, because obviously it's just going to make it more like a paint consistency. So first off, I put a coat of clear wax all over the door, and that is just going to create a barrier between the green paint and the brown wax which I'm going to apply and that just means I get more control over the brown wax so if I apply it too thickly or if I want to blend any lines in it just means that the chalk mineral paint isn't going to grab onto the pigment in the wax and that applies whether you're using your own coloured wax like I've made here or whether you're using Dixie Bell's pre-made coloured waxes I always do this process unless I want a particularly different look and then I may not apply the clear wax but 99% of the time I will always apply the clear wax first because it just gives you much greater control over the placement of your coloured waxes. So you'll notice I put the clear wax on with a sponge and for me that's the quickest and easiest way to apply a thin even layer of clear wax over a piece and this is quite a, a large kind of flat piece as well it hasn't got too much detail but then you'll notice that I'm using for the brown wax I'm using a brush and this is a premium chip brush so it's got natural bristles which is what's ideally best to use with wax because it doesn't it doesn't sort of clog the bristles up like it would a synthetic brush. It holds the correct amount of product and it distributes it nicely on the surface as well. So these brushes are really inexpensive, but I use them most of the time for applying wax. And all I'm doing is just concentrating on the areas where I want to create shade. So that's going to be around the kind of corners and edges. And then I usually take the original method that I've applied the clear wax with, which in this case is the sponge, and then I'm just going to really carefully sort of feather the line between where the brown wax finishes and the sort of green paint starts, if you like. And I just kind of feather that in so you get a really soft transition between where the brown wax finishes. And that just gives you a nice kind of feathered soft edge instead of such harsh lines. You can also use the blue sponge as an eraser. So if you wanted to take off a lot of the colored wax that you'd applied, if you've applied it too thickly or you don't like the look of it, you can use it as an eraser. Just put a little bit more clear wax on the sponge and it'll just take off the brown wax. Um, if you want to take it off altogether, you can use a baby wipe or a damp rag because this wax is actually a water-based wax, so you don't need any chemicals to remove it. So for the top, I'm going to use Voodoo Gel Stain, which is a water-based stain, and this is the colour Tobacco Road, which is a really nice kind of mid-brown colour. And to start off with, I'm just going to apply some on an applicator sponge and just wipe it over a thin layer over the raw wood. I always pour it on an applicator sponge first. If you pour it straight out of the tub onto raw wood, what tends to happen is the wood kind of sucks it in really quickly and you tend to get tide marks. So I always apply it onto my applicator pad first. Additionally, if you have got a really dried out piece of wood, what you can do is just lightly spray it with a little spritz of water and that way it just gives you a little bit more open time to work with the stain before your wood grips onto it if you like and it just reduces those tide marks. So this stain is buildable and I just did two coats of it in total. The first coat might go on a little bit patchy because you're going over raw wood but when you've applied the second coat that should even things out a little bit and it just gives you a really nice kind of mid-brown kind of look. It's not really dark, it's also a little bit more sheer than the oil um, no paint gel stain which Dixie Bell also do. 
So I just like this because I still wanted to see quite a lot of the wood grain. And I also wanted to add some detail onto the top. I didn't want to leave it completely plain. I did want to add some stencil detail. Even though the stencil didn't work out on the front, I decided to add a stencil on the top instead. So this is the first coat going on. And then the second coat, as you can see, just make sure you leave really good drying time in between. Otherwise, the second coat will start to lift the first. And as you can see, it just kind of gives you a little bit more coverage on the second one and just evens up any patchiness. Okay, as I mentioned, I wanted to put a stencil on the top. I never make things easy for myself. And I wanted to kind of not match it to the colour that I'd created the wax with, but almost kind of tie things in together. So I used the same two colours. I used a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of coffee bean, which are the same colours that I used to tint my wax. Stirred those together to create a custom brown. And that's the colour that I'm going to stencil over the top. So it's going to give me kind of a two-tone brown effect. I could have done this with a darker shade of stain. You can use stain to stencil as well. I just use paint because it's going to dry a lot quicker than the uh, no paint gel stain. So all I'm using is a Bestang brush, which is really good for stenciling. And I'm just tapping this over my stencil. There's a couple of different ways you can apply your paint over a stencil you can either tap it like this and like sort of stipple the paint on the surface you can also swirl it over the stencil and you can use a roller as well i'm just doing it this way this time um, because i kind of want a distressed look to this stencil i don't want it pristine because the whole kind of look of this is like a sort of cottage farmhouse kind of look so i'm just going over the whole stencil, this is a really, really big stencil. I will list all the names of the products in the description below as well if you don't catch them. So this is a really, really big stencil, which is great for doing big surfaces. And if you noticed, I've just left a little bit of an overhang over the left-hand side because it's got quite a deep top. And if I left that top, sort of the 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 side if I didn't stencil that it'd probably look a little bit strange so I knew I had to bring that stencil down so here's what I did first of all I just stenciled the top then I worked in a really really small area at a time holding it with my left hand and then tapping a little bit of paint on and then moving the whole thing down and tapping a little bit more paint on and then moving my hand down and tapping a little bit more paint on and then basically just repeated that until I had completed the side. That way, I'm not moving my stencil around too much. So if I'd have just done the whole top and then come back and then tried to do the sides, it just mean matching the pattern up and I'm not great at that, I'm not gonna lie. So I left the stencil where it was and then I did the whole top and then I curled it round and did the edge and then I moved it down there's a tiny little bit at the very front that I just need to kind of match the pattern up. So I completed the top bit first, again, made sure that was all okay. And then again, bent the stencil around the side and worked in teeny, teeny sections at a time just to make sure that the pattern continued over the lip of the top. And you are probably sick of the sound of my voice in this because I've talked loads through this video, but I tried to cram it in all at once without being too long-winded and too boring. But if you've noticed, I've got like a little workstation on the top there. So I've got my paint on the paper plate. I'm dabbing it on my bristles. I'm taking the majority of the paint off on the paper plate. And then I've got a blue shop cloth, which I'm removing even more of the paint. So you want as little paint on your bristles as you possibly can with stenciling because that is going to reduce the amount of bleed through you get, which is basically when the paint seeps under the stencil. So this way, by taking the paint off and then dabbing it on the shop cloth, you just get the perfect amount of paint on your bristles and just gives you a more crisper pattern. Again, the front lip was exactly the same. So as I brought the stencil down, I knew I had to paint the front lip um, exactly the same as I did the side. So I didn't move the stencil. That way I knew the pattern was gonna line up. And I just went across it in really small sections, holding my left hand 
um, on the stencil and making sure that was as flat on the surface as I possibly could before moving along. So I completely finished the left hand side and I worked my way towards the right hand side of the top and that way I'm not moving my stencil over places that I've already painted and risking smudging it. And if you noticed on the left hand side of the stencil I've left quite an over, over sort of overhang onto the already stencil piece. So that's going to line up the stencil. Um, it takes you longer because obviously you're lining up a couple of inches on the left over the pattern that you've already created but it just means that your pattern stays true and level across the piece. As I mentioned previously, I wanted a little bit more of a distressed look for this, so I went over it with a sanding sponge, which is equivalent to a 220 grit, just to soften the edges and give it a little bit more of a distressed look. And then I needed to add a top coat, so I wanted something durable and water resistant that was going to be pretty tough. And I'm using Terra Tough. This is becoming my favourite top coat. Don't tell Wax I said that. But it's really easy to work with. It gives you quite a nice sheen on your furniture. And just because it was specifically designed to be used with Terra paint, which is Dixie Bell's clay paint, it doesn't actually mean you just have to use it with that. You can use it over the top of all the other Dixie Bell products. So I'm going to use it to seal the top. And I'm using it with a foam and dandy brush. This is the largest size that Dixie Bell create. And it just about fits in the tub, although you should really decant your top coat onto something else or into something else so that you don't bring any contaminants from the top into your product but i am a bad person and i didn't do that although i usually do do it i just didn't do it this time so for top coats for large surfaces i just whack it on as quick as i can and then just really lightly once i've got coverage of the product all over I use the foam and dandy brush and just go over it really, really lightly to lay it off. So I get it on as quick as I can and then I lay it off and make sure I go all in the same direction with my brush strokes. So I'm going left to right here and then I just catch the edge at the front. Every time you put a top coat on your piece, it always looks really patchy. Don't be tempted to try and touch that up before it's dry. The second coat will nine times out of 10 look 100% better and it'll go on a lot easier as well because you've already applied one top coat. So the second one went on a lot easier and quicker than the first and it just adds basically a nice even top coat coverage without any patchiness. And then I just finally buffed the wax to just give it a nice sheen on the main body. Here's a couple of close-ups. You can see the shading and the top there. And this is the final shot with my little dog asleep in front of it. As always, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will catch you next time. Bye.